Good morning, folks. Wow, what a 24 hours of heavy analysis over here. We hope you saw part four of the catastrophe cycle, the solar micronova, one of the more unnerving videos I've made. But also we've been working to confirm what many of you already intuitively figured out. We had significant solar storm effects on Earth yesterday. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star with little more to show than the next set of coronal holes ready to turn through. We are, of course, inside a coronal hole stream in the solar wind, always a faster and more geo-effective stream than from ambient coronal emission. Now, while the global scale field disruption only hit level one briefly, the magnetometers show 120 nanotesla deviation, and when you get major scale electrical problems like what happened with the internet, 911, phone service, and hospital records yesterday, that's indeed what you expect to see. And that goes for the transformer problems as well. This is the one most of you know about already. New York City was illuminated by a Con Ed transformer that took a surge and caught fire, immediately engulfing the machine in an incredible arc that glowed visibly for miles around. And then there is what happened in Louisiana, this one many fewer know about. Whether it is these types of issues or the larger scale server and network problems which often hit the airline industry, they can persist for 48 hours after the solar storm effects die down. That's when the outer magnetosphere quiets, but that's because the energy has been integrated lower. Based on the sun, earth, meteorological, and infrastructure evidence, these were almost certainly driven by the coronal hole stream disruption. Of course, the other side of this is the earthquake modulation. You'll recall we were waiting for the Phi Angle shift. The disaster prediction app alerted you two nights ago that it had begun. Phi Angle in blue riding direct sun to earth direction sustained through when a major earthquake struck the Philippines. Numerous blood echoes struck this region yesterday and with the typhoon slamming the country at that time, we put our top ring of fire alert there and indeed, it was a perfect realization of the earthquake forecasting model at quakewatch.net. Up next, we are going to the freaky geological event. For the third time this year, fire and lava are breaking up out of the ground in far eastern India, this time at the location of an electrical pole. The government has expressed considerable concern there, but has been significantly shorter on explanations. A couple articles of note today. First is the appearance of Saturn over its 30-year orbit and how ring effects are causing the apparent changes in the North Pole hexagon and surrounding clouds. The big claims are coming from Uppsala and, well, 10 points for trying to work around dark energy and dark matter failures thus far. They see the entire universe as being on the shell of a bubble expanding in another dimension connected by strings in its expansion. What's inside? Who knows? Outside? Ask the gatekeeper of the other dimension. Oh, and by the way, it somehow tricks us into thinking we are in three dimensions and see things in vast space. While someone creative will eventually figure out how to answer the dark mysteries of the universe, this might be a little too creative. Folks, part four of that catastrophe cycle. It is the best 20-minute intro I can give to the Micronova. Today's Fly on the Wall podcast will be discussing that and other key topics from the last week. The Sunday panel at Observing the Frontier 2019 will be on the solar Micronova, and we'll have special guests for it. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.